Hey, this is Akiva from Twisted Tree Farm. I'm looking at a chestnut planting that I started about eight years ago from seed. Uh, I started all the trees in the nursery uh, and grew them for a year and then I brought them up here and planted them. And uh, this is just to give you a realistic idea of what you can expect on uh, poor soil with minimal care. And uh, you can see all the challenges we've had up here over the last eight years. Uh, this tree's doing really well. It's, uh, I think it was planted about eight years ago, and it's got a lot of nuts on it right now. It's got a real spreading form, several trunks. A lot of people ask me about the uh, pruning and stuff. I just let them do whatever they want. I don't care if they have three or four or five trunks. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but if you wanted a more timber form, then you would plant really differently. You'll see this planting is really widely spaced out. And uh, we're going to look at some others that are much closer. Um, but uh, when I plant initially, uh, over here, these are all planted just one uh, this year. So this is our first season. And you can see what we're dealing with. Uh, it's the end of September, and there's uh, water. Uh, this is how high the water table is up here. So I do the pit and mound, which I talk about in uh, great detail in my book. And uh, I think there's an article on our website about it, too, if you just look up Twisted Tree Farm. But uh, the tree's growing on a mound. And then uh, I got a little bit of deer protection, and I try to keep the grass mowed um, at least twice a year. And then I'll probably come up in the in a few weeks and put like a mouse guard on this little tree. Um, anyway, so let's walk around and look at some trees that are that are doing well and some that are not. And probably the biggest challenges we've had is uh, weed control, like keeping the grass away from the trees from choking them out. And then uh, some years it's been really dry and it's like, I never water up here. It's, you know, it seems like too much work. Um, but then uh, deer have been a pretty serious uh, thing. And then uh, ambrosia beetles have been devastating. So you can see some of these trees have like, like a dead uh, part of the tree. And you'll see some are completely dead. That's from ambrosia beetles. This is a nice looking tree. It's got... It's got a lot of nuts on it, and it's got a really good timber form too, actually. Um, a lot of these trees are bearing just for the first time. Some of them have been bearing for three or four years now. Um, but uh, let's keep going. So the ambrosia beetle is a really serious pest. They don't just hit chestnuts, they hit a lot of trees. And uh, you have to scout, if you have them, it's like, I feel bad for you, it stinks. Um, but you have to scout for them in the spring, and if you uh, spray pyrethrum, which is an organic insecticide, that'll, uh, that'll knock them back, and you can save the tree, at least from the roots. Usually you'll lose the top. Um, so like these trees right here, they didn't get sprayed in time, and the whole tree died. But, uh, but then you got some trees up here that didn't happen. Once the trees get big enough, ambrosia beetles aren't a concern. Uh, I accidentally brought them in by buying a, a tree from somebody, a potted tree, and it had them. And now we have them up here, but uh, hopefully you never have them. Anyway, some of these trees are really beautiful, and uh, it's doing really well. These are all chestnut, eight years old. And as we go higher up on the hill, the water table is, is uh, lower. It's, it's a little bit better drained. This is a black locust just mixed in. Um, but I think the trees do a lot better higher and drier. As you can see, some of them are just really doing great. They got nice fat burrs on them. They should be opening any day now. Here's a beautiful tree. It looks like, it looks like some of those burrs are starting to, to crack open. This is a, a little planting of Osage orange and honey locust just in the hedgerow. But, uh, but some of these trees were planted a lot closer together, and uh, so I'm going to have to come in and, and thin these out. This is just a swale I did with chestnuts, and this swale is actually much younger. This swale is five years old. Uh, it's about 300 feet or so, and uh, there's a whole bunch of chestnuts in here. A lot of different genetics of uh, the Castanea genus mixed in. Um, when I get closer to the top of the hill here, Start planting more American hybrid chestnuts. These are uh, large trees. I'm not sure why I planted them, but I thought they'd be kind of cool. There's a uh, black locust mixed in. These are the Hungarian strain. 
supposed to be a really good timber form. We'll see what they do. But uh, but these are so then these chestnuts. There's like six or seven of them right here. They go right down this right down this row. And these are a sweetheart chestnut. They're doing really great. This is like the first year they've made nuts. This is a tree that was bred by the American Turkey Federation. It's supposed to have really small, uh, sweet chestnuts. They're 50-50 Chinese and American. And then up here, this is uh, one of our American hybrid chestnuts. Doing really good. It's probably 25, 30 feet tall. Um, these are like 90, over 90 percent American chestnut. I have some that are 100 percent in a different area. I have a lot of different timber strains. Uh, you can see this tree. The timber strains are really um, experimental as far as blight goes. You can see this tree here. It had some blight and it did something really amazing. As soon as the blight appeared I figured out oh, I guess this tree won't last. But uh, you can see here this is all callus tissue. So the tree has actually closed that wound and it's healing. So it's it's somewhat susceptible to chestnut blight, but it's able to close the wound and keep living and actually uh, thrive right now. This tree is a little bit older than the other plantings. I think it's planted in 2009 or 2010, so it's about 12 years old. And we'll see what it does over time. It's too early to really know. Uh, here's some more American hybrid chestnuts. And we'll just walk for... Another little bit here. Just check out some of these trees. But it's pretty fun to see these trees get going. Get going. Um, they're established enough that um, I don't have to worry about watering or, or weeds really at this point. I do mow the grass um, and that's uh, partly just to keep things down but also so I can harvest uh, nuts and stuff. And you can see the deer cage is still on here. I used to take these off once the trees got to be six or seven feet tall. And then the deer would just destroy them. So having the trees tall enough is not, it's not enough to take the deer fence off. Because they will just rub their antlers and, and break them off. And they'll be pretty aggressive with chestnut. I think chestnut is kind of like, it's like apples or something. The deer really, really like browsing on them. And they just seem to be very drawn to these trees. This is one of our American hybrids that's making a lot of nuts. Most of them uh, don't make a lot of nuts. That one has a really nice uh, pyramidal form. That looks like it could actually be a, a forest tree. But see how it doesn't have any nuts on it? The second tree here. And uh, this one does. It's better if uh, you're growing for timber that they don't make a lot of nuts because in the forest you want trees that are going to grow up, up, up before they start fruiting. An orchard is different. You kind of want nuts as soon as you can get them, just like fruit trees. Um, but uh, And then these ones down here, these are pure Americans. And uh, some of them have uh, already gotten blight. I can't even remember when I planted these. But uh, I just wanted to have some of their genetics up here for a little while. And uh, they, they can be coppiced and they'll sprout from the stumps again. You can see that. That branch, that's that's probably blight if I went in there and looked closer. These are some black locusts on the left and uh, chestnuts on the right. And uh, the black locusts are actually were planted at the same time that the chestnuts were. They just grow a lot faster. They're already at least 30, 35 feet tall, well on their way to becoming forest trees. Anyway, this is this is the earth, and if you have land and it's well drained, you can plant chestnuts. And it's a beautiful thing to leave behind for all the animals, skunks, possums, squirrels, chipmunks, bears, deer, kids. All kinds of stuff are going to come and eat chestnuts. It is a truly magnetic tree in a magnetic world. Thank you for watching.